Razer's just released the Shima trees. Wait, what? Brian Shima as a signature model in 2023. And it's the Shima trees, but wasn't the Shima 4, 5, 6 and 7 already released back in the day? Yes, it was, but this is a remastered version of the Shima trees. Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to the Razer's Shima tree remastered review. Okay, I will be speaking about Brian Shima having a signature skate in 2023. But before that, let me actually speak about the product itself. And if you didn't know, well, this skate was released already, at least the Shima tree was released already in the early 2000s. I used to have the Shima 2s and was one of my favorite skates and obviously Shima 2s meaning that there was a Shima 1. The Shima 1 was an all black skate with a super tall liner saying Shima in the back, grey sole plates. And back in the day I really loved that skate but when the Shima 2 came out for me it was a complete game changer. It was the first skate that came out with a ground control frame and at the time UFS was just a new thing and that skate had a UFS frame that had the interchangeable age block. The, the frame was also symmetrical, meaning that you could use the frame in one way or if you spin it, you could spin it, you could use it the other way. And that was an amazing skate back then. It also had a super tall liner with a double R, kind of like wings, but with an R shaped thing in the back. It was amazing and it was probably one of the skates that I skated the best. But it was one of my last cults. I had a cult again like two years ago and I made a review of that skate. But this is different. It's different. It's different because it has Shima's name. <laughs> and it's, she, it's different from the one that I had two years ago because of the components on this skate. So let me start by telling you that this is the first time ever that I was able to downsize on a pair of Colts. And yes, I knew that I could probably fit on a smaller size Colt, but because the liner that used to come on the Colts, at least like two years ago or even last year, was so thick, it wasn't the same. So I would feel my feet really, really cramped. So I was able to fit on a size 42. It's a US 9, UK 8, European 42, 274 millimeters. Ah, and let me just tell you that this video is shamelessly sponsored by my Patreon. So, I got five new patrons over the past month and they are Bella, Lloyd E, Reto Bergen, Sean and Wes Kane. And this year, <laughs> Patreon winner of a Will Addict shirt is... Roll the video. The winner of this month patron giveaway is Dave Arthur. Dave, please send me a message on Patreon so that we can send you your prize. Now, back to the video. So, let's talk about the feet on these skates. When someone who has a feet that is 275 millimeters tried to fit on a 274 millimeters, one millimeter less. So what I felt was just like on my last review 
on the God's theme skate, which was also a wide skate. It felt really snug and I love that. It's compared to the previous skate that I had, to the previous coat that I had, that my foot was a bit like floating inside. And when I looked from the top, didn't look as good in my opinion. These, they just feel snug. I love it. I love how they feel a part of one thing and I'll get there. And when I look from the top, I really love the look on these. I really love it. But just like on the God's theme skate, the big problem that I find is the UFS receptor. Basically, there's a round thing on the inside of the boot that instead of being, instead of having a cutout space in the shell itself, what happens is that that round metal thing stays on top. So because my foot is so snug, every little millimeter inside this boot actually matters. So I, I kind of feel everything a lot more. So I feel like a metal plate right underneath the bottom of my foot, right on the front UFS receptor is. And that's the one thing that annoys me the most. In terms of stability, when I put this skate on, I kind of felt like my foot had a good forward flex. So much so that even without having a huge negative plate, I keep on saying the same, huh? without having a huge negative plate, I was able to do negatives really easily. Of course, if the, the heel on the negative side would be a bit wider, it would be easier. But when you have a good forward flex, negative tricks are easier. Of course, if you have good forward flex, a lot of the tricks that you need to bend, like on the edges, like on the backslide or something like that, will also be easier. But at the end of the day, I felt like I had good forward flex, but I didn't add a lot of like um, side flex, which is good in my opinion. It means that it's a pretty stable skate, especially with this size, I kind of felt like my heel was locked in place. So in terms of performance and in terms of um, stability, I kind of felt that the skate was all there, honestly. Like it a lot. I love the liner that comes on this. This skate comes with a rain liner. And I said lots of good things about the rain V3 about two years ago when I had it first. I really like this liner. I like how slim it is. I like the little neoprene front piece that they have on this. Like a lot of the brands, they put a big neoprene piece in the front. Razors doesn't do that. Razors does like only a tiny bit of neoprene here so that it expands enough, but it doesn't fold because the neoprene can also fold in the front, creating something very weird. Also, Razors doesn't put neoprene on the bottom of the liner, which some brands do. And I understand why they do it, but at the end of the day, the neoprene on the bottom is very slippery. So with this rain liner, you have a rubbery, like a hard rubber sole. And I like that. I really like this liner, especially to come on a skate stock. It's, it's an awesome liner. I just wish, I really wish that this UFS receptor wasn't sticking on top. Other than that, what's also different from the Cult is that it has this leather piece, let's call it a leather piece here in the front. And I heard that on last year's version of the Shima, because there was also a remastered Shima 1 skate that came out last year, all black. Some people complained that they were ripping these lace loops. I've read somewhere online that these things have been reworked so they're stronger. The truth is, I didn't felt any problem with these. I don't know if they're stronger or if they're weaker, but I can tell you that nothing wrong happened. Like I, I could tighten them as much as I could, nothing happened. Now, I did not use the same laces for the bottom and for the liner. When you buy this skate, it comes with two laces, one just for the liner, one for the, the front of the boot. And that's exactly why I skated them. When I skated with this liner, because I ended up also skating it with other liners, but I'll get there in a second. 
rest now. I'm still speaking about the skate stock. The buckle is a very basic buckle. It's a plastic buckle, so of course not as resistant as some aluminum buckles. But again, I also didn't have any problem with it, especially because it was well protected by this wing here on the cuffs. I didn't lost any bolts because sometimes when you skate a skate stock, all the bolts or whatever, they don't come very tight, so very easily you lose them. I didn't lost anything. Now, something that I was really excited about this skate was the frame that it comes with. This comes with the Featherlight 4 frame, which is the newest frame from Ground Control, which is basically a frame that it's made to be skated flat. This comes with four wheels the same size, but it has an interchangeable age block. So about two so three years ago, I skated a frame from Ground Control called the HD frame. It was Ground Control aluminum frame. And I really love how it felt. Like the age block was the same as these. So I was excited to try something that would allow me to do topside tricks or to do sole tricks, which I struggled a bit with the aluminum frame, but would also have the same age block that I would have on that Ground Control HD. So I enjoyed it. But on this boot, especially because the sole plate, yes, the sole plate is wide, but not as wide as on other Razor's models or not as wide as other skates that I've been skating, such as the Rollerblade Blanks. Or the space in the sole plate is not as deep as on the Rollerblade Blanks because the Rollerblade Blanks, it's not only wide, but also the frame goes deep in the sole plate to attach to the boot, what, they, what Rollerblade calls direct mount. These ones, you are attaching the frame to the sole plate and the sole plate is also attached to the boot. So the frame sticks out a bit, making the frame feel a bit taller. Now, I'm not saying that the frame is extremely tall. I think if I keep on using it, I will for sure get used to it. But if you're expecting to do some lazy skating like you can do on other Razor skates, it's not like that. <laughs> you need to really bend your feet in order to, to, to do some of the tricks. But I was able to do front torques. I was able to do backslides. When I did Royales, I could do them. But when I was trying this long rail, I kind of felt like after a while I started feeling my feet a little bit because I had to bend more than I'm used to. So I could do them, but I felt like I had to to go a little bit deeper in order to be able to do it. Of course, the frame was completely new, and if I get a groove on the frame, I will not have that problem, if you can say that is a problem. Now, going to the wheels. This skate comes with ground control, 60 millimeter wheels. It has a, like a, a big core. The profile of the wheel is, they call it flat top. It's basically like the face wheels used to be. It's almost like pointy, but at the end, it's flat, so it has about like eight, nine millimeter flat and everything else goes like pointier. So these wheels on these frames, they actually work quite well. The bearings are fast. I don't know what bearings they are, but they're fast. The backslide plate that you have here, I, I know that people like these more than the previous one, but for me having this deeper and smaller uh, groove, kind of feels weird at first, but I know that with time this will just break in and get like a, a longer, like a wider um, backslide groove and it would get easier. Because at first there was sometimes that I was trying torque tricks and I kind of felt like I go from out to in or in out and then it just like goes unstable. But this is something that you get used to. Something that it's very cool about this skate and it's been like this on the Razor Sculpt for a long time is these bubbles that you have here, like these little holes that you have on the sole plate, reducing the the contact, the, the surface in contact while you're grinding, making sole tricks very, very fast on these. And especially with these frames, because there are some parts that are just in. Basically, you don't have like a lot of plastic touching when you're grinding, when, especially when you're doing sole tricks. So that was one of the first things that I felt when I first got these skates. Sole tricks are very, very fast. About the skate stock, yeah, I think they are amazing. As a stock skate, you pay $3.99, which is not cheap. It's not the cheapest skate on the market. But if you think that you're getting a skate that comes with a rain liner, with a ground control 
Featherlight 4 frame, which is the latest from ground control, with 4 times 60 millimeters, meaning that it has 8 bearings on each skate, 4 wheels on each skate. I like it. I think it's, it's a good package. Now, if you're looking at the Cult as the, <laughs> the budget skate, because there was a time that you could buy a budget for 169 and it still came with the ground control frame. That's like, that's a huge bump, like a huge jump from 169 to 399. But yeah, you need to pay Brian Shima. You need to pay to have an higher end liner. You need to pay to have more wheels down on the floor. You need to pay to have the latest frame. And yeah, you need to pay for the extra leather that you have on top and you need to pay for 2023. A lot of things changed since the pandemic. The, the cost of the raw materials, the shipping, everything, you need to pay for it. So at the end of the day, yeah, it's hard for a lot of us to understand. But yeah, these skates cost $3.99. Now, when these skates started shining for me was when I started changing some things. When you use 54, 55s, you can change the frames without changing anything, huh? It's really cool. Olha. As good as they are stock, I told you that I was feeling something on the inside that UFS receptors. So I started changing liners. I first put like an Intuition liner, the V2 liner, which I keep on saying it's one of my favorite liners, if not my favorite liner of all times. So I put the V2 liner here, and when I change for the V2, I've also put like the Red Eye Michael Witzeman wheels. They are like 55 millimeters, so I thought, yeah, if I'm gonna have like smaller wheels, a liner that will give me a little bit more space, I'm sure they're gonna feel even better, even if I was enjoying them, but I thought it would feel better, and I will feel more confident to try some tricks. Even if the frame is tall, I would be able to do some tricks better. And that's when I started being able to do torques, because previously with the four wheel 60 millimeters, I think I was able, I didn't really try them. I, I lacked confidence a little bit to try them. So yeah, when I got the, the, the 55 millimeters and the intuitions, it didn't solve my problem. The intuitions didn't solve my problem with the UFS receptor, but the wheels solved my confidence problem. It made them skate a little bit slower, of course, but the wheels are good. And those 52, 50, 
95s, 92s, they felt good. They, fe they made me feel more confident to try some tricks. But when I got more confident with this skate was when I skated them like this. This is how they felt the best for me. And I'm not saying that this is going to be the same for everyone, but right here I'm skating the Entente Entente anti-rocker frame. It's a new frame from Entente. They, are, they were known or they are known for making the, the Didi Dari frame. This is the Lari Fari. The Lari Fari is an anti-rocker version of the frame that they released almost two years ago, which was a flat frame. The material of this frame is similar to the, the ones that come on, on adapt skates, or I think it's POM, P-O-M. That's the name of this. It's an extremely fast and durable plastic. The age block is much wider and deeper than the one that comes on the, on the skate stock. I skated them with that 58, 92. So these are the 88. Um, some free letting wheels. These are handmade in Germany by the same people that make these frames. So when you buy this frame, you can buy it with these wheels. And then liner wise, I went for the Ricardo Lino 2 from Roches, the RL2. So this RL2, it's not a liner that I can use on every skate, but there has been two skates that I really love it, other than the Roches skates. And the Roches skates feels amazing, like on the M2Ls, on the fifth elements. But when I use them on the blanks, it's the liner that stays on my blanks. And now, after trying the Intuition and still feeling that thing on the bottom, I, I thought, let me try the RL2s. And when I put the RL2s here, I don't know why, maybe because the liner has a slimmer profile when it comes to height. So it's probably like a lower sole or a lower, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that I didn't felt as much pressure coming from that UFS receptor when using the RL2. So it stayed here now. What else? I don't know, man. These skates like these just felt like a lot more like home to me. Well, yeah, so a little bit more lazy skating, if you can call that. It's like you don't need to bend as much, but you kind of feel super confident. And yeah, skating anti-rocker, these sole plates with this frame, it's just, it does feel amazing. Now, this is a little bit heavier than the previous one, obviously because of the leather. Let's see how heavy this is. This is how I'm skating them. Let's call the, the fun police, the scale here. And let's see, if I'm skating them like these, they are, Two thousand and seventy-five grams. Two thousand and seventy-five grams. I remember the cult without this leather, with the stock liner being around one point nine. So I got almost two hundred grams more. And stock. Let's see how heavy they are. Stock. Stock. With the rain liner, with the featherlight four, and with flat a flat setup, this is 1,970 grams. So RL2 liner and Lari Fari frame, it's heavier anti-rocker than the stock setup. So the stock setup, it's still under 2,000 grams. Not that it really make a huge difference to me, because at the end of the day, I, I don't jump that much. And I don't jump to high rails or anything like that. If I need to jump to a high rail, hopefully it's steep enough so that I can go fast and jump forward. So yeah, that is about it. Now, let me talk about how I feel when I see some people complaining or not being as happy with Brian Shima having a signature skate in 2023. I believe that Brian Shima has been one of the skaters that left the biggest mark in what we do nowadays. And as someone who did so much for us, and as someone who actually tried to start, like, not tried, he actually started his own company, he pushed the sport in a way that very few were able to push, and 
it was extremely unlucky by having an accident that weed skating he ended up having to retire so to have razors releasing a skate a shima skate a remastered version of something that they put in the past i respect that and i respect again because of how much it, it, it did for us and this is basically razors showing respect to brian shima because brian shima actually changed his brand brian shima made razors into what they became now nowadays they are different from what they were 10 years ago when brian shima did a lot of things for them and other guys such as brian Aragon, john elliott and all these guys well they did a lot for this brand it's like a way for the brand pay back for what they did and if they want to stay related to skating i respect that now there's a lot of people out there saying so where's the andrew broom skate where's the jason adriani where's the alex bernstein skate i respect that too <laughs> it's hard for all of us to see all these guys that deserve pro boots especially for being so good and for doing so much for the sport but at the end of the day if we're going to put ourselves in the place of the people that produces the skates or that are investing money on the skates it's kind of like producing a skate with brian Sheeman name it's going to be safer than putting a skate on a newer pro so i am not saying that i agree with this but i understand the reason why it's being done now would i love to see andrew broom skate yes i would i know that it's coming i also know that it's coming a jason adriani skate I, Hopefully there's also Alex Burns' skate coming, but right now not a lot of people is aware of it. A lot of people still think that inline skating is on a high. Inline skating was on a high, a super high high about two years ago. But right now what's been happening with the skate industry is that a lot of shops are overstocked. So with the shops being overstocked, that means that the brands will also be if they are not already overstocked so all the stuff that comes end up staying for a long time so probably all these pro models that we want to see they have been produced they are probably waiting on warehouses waiting for the shops to sell some of the products that they have so that they these brands can sell more to the shop so in my opinion it's going to happen but it's up to all of us now just so that i think it's important for me to say these skates were not given to me by razors i bought these skates i bought them at a, a lower price i bought them at a shop price as a shop owner i bought it as a shop price but what's going to happen is until we take some of the skates out of the stores it's going to be hard for a lot of these brands to release new products so yeah i love the fact that Brian Shima had a skate released in 2023 and I can't wait to see Andrew Broom and Jason Adriani and Alex Bernstein and all the other guys that also deserve skates out there so that is it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed this review if there is any doubts that you have about this skate please let me know in the comments and I can either answer your comments or I can even make another video where I can answer some of those questions that you have about these or about any other skate that I've been skating or that I will skate so with that being said I hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to this channel and like I always say don't forget why we all started skating